faith is the mother of all virtues. Part two of seven on between master and disciples, given in English on July seven, two thousand nineteen, in Taiwan, also known as Formosa. And in Monaco, they also recognize loyalty. The hotel where I stay, when I first went there, I looked for places for Europe. We did not have SMC. We did not have a house yet. Okay, I have to go there because at that time also we had SMTV. I have to stay in a, a hotel that I can stay long with the high internet speed, so that I can send things, you know, document or USB and. Then, you know, film stuff like that, because I have to check SMTV also at that time. Yeah, yeah. So people also criticize me for living in a big hotel, first, you know, five star hotel, or oh, four star. But I live in a hotel, but apartment belong to the hotel, but cheap. You pay three thousand something one month, but you have to live for a longer time, not just like one month only. You know, you sign a contract maybe half a year, a year. But only three thousand, three and a half, or three thousand something, not even four thousand euro, and you have free internet. Yeah, free everything, <laughs> except food and drink and <laughs> room service, <laughs> of course. <laughs> But you have free, uh, free service of a chambermaid. You know, they come and change your sheet every ten days. If you stay in a hotel room, they change every day, of course. But you stay cheaper every ten days. That's good enough for me. In my house, I don't change it every maybe <laughs> ten weeks or something. <laughs> yeah, but I keep it clean, you know. If I'm not clean, I never lay on my bed. Yeah, so it's never smell bad or anything. <laughs> so sometimes living in a good hotel doesn't mean doesn't mean luxury. It doesn't mean you are overspend. In fact, it's cheaper even. Because some hotels are so big and they don't have enough customer, so they cut out some part of it, make it apartment, you know, and like that they're always full all year round and still earn money. Yeah, and uh, less workers, so so less less expenses. Yeah, and people stay there stably. It's also good, nah? Huh? They don't have to take care a lot. The customer take care of themselves, and they also can sell their food and drinks in their hotel. They earn differently also, because they have restaurants in the hotel, and they have a bistro, they have co coffee shop, and they have a, um, yeah bar. So always full of people. It make the hotel look crowded and prosperous. Also good advertisement. Very smart, very smart. So sometimes I live in luxury hotel where I don't pay a lot, <laughs> and I am vegan, so don't eat a lot, huh? Just a pizza or something, yeah, a soup, <laughs> salad, but good high-speed internet. Actually, I had two helpers at that time, you know, one from Mexico, and one from uh, from uh, uh, Finland. Yeah, now they're still working for SMTV. Yeah, both of them are so good-looking. Yeah, whenever I go out with them, all the women Monaco, waga. <laughs> Who are they? They say my brothers. <laughs> say they don't look like you. Uh, yeah, I adopted them. <laughs> They all ga ga goo goo, you know. Oh man, I feel also proud to go out with handsome guys. <laughs> Concerning two handsome guys, it's an interesting story coming. <laughs> I'm sure you like to hear very much. Yeah, I tell you. Yeah, I have to do the job of four or five people. Today the nails missing a little bit because I didn't have enough time. <laughs> Long time I didn't put any color on. Put it on, don't look too bad. Make you look a little younger. <laughs> the hand. And I need a hairdresser, hair stylist, and hair dyer, and dress uh, um, seamstress. Sometimes they make the dress too big, too small. I had to fix it all by myself. Yeah. So uh, makeup artist also. I do the job of four or five people. I need to eat something. You don't give me food, I don't work. <laughs> Are you happy, all of you? Yes. 
Sorry, I didn't invite you earlier before. I just too busy and have to organize things, you know? It wasn't all that possible before. We had to repair many things, especially bathroom. In some area don't have an air con or that. I have to take care a little bit here and there. See who is best I like. I like see who. Natural, eh? Yeah. A lot of natural mosquitoes. <laughs> natural ants. <laughs> But you guys have all you need, right? Remind me of the story again. Mm. Um, no, this one very appetizing. You guys don't have? No, they're meat. Just some spicy, like Indian. Yeah. You know. mm. Give you some so you don't miss your home too much. <coughs> Try it with rice. If you have rice, have rice? No. Don't have here, here, here. Look like Indian rice. Look like Indian fried rice. You guys can eat anything. See, different, okay? Don't be jealous. <laughs> the Indian people, they eat very spicy stuff. I'm sure she must be very uh, food sick every day, right? I a little spicy. Yeah, yeah, okay. Okay, good. You know what? Pakora. Mm. You know what? You can order spice, okay? Tell them you need this, you need that, and they buy for you, and you keep it all for yourself in the corner. <laughs> yeah? Write your names on it, and then every day, whatever, normal rice, but if you put curry, masala, whatever on it, then it would taste also similar. Huh? Similar. Not the same. You want me to order some Indian food and pack from airplane? Bring it to you? No, no, Master. I'm enjoying Taiwanese and Korean spices. Yeah? Yes, Master. Good. Wonderful. What makes you like to come to Taiwan? <laughs> this is the only place that I want to. Huh? This is the most comforting place. Yeah? Yes, Master. Wonderful. Mm, but I love India. People. I thought they love India, the food and people are so pure, you know? Mostly, of course, everywhere we have um, rich and poor, you know? But they are very, very pure people, very, very uh, God-loving, believing. Mm. You can go to any corner of any farm, anywhere, far away from city. And you go into any farmer's house, the first thing they say to you is God's name, like Ram Ram or Krishna or whatever, they would say that to greet you. Yeah, they remember only God. <laughs> I love that very much. At one time I went on my pilgrim all over, I walk around, roam around, and went into one farm. She, she's a farmer, but she's robust, big, strong, you know. Healthy. She saw me come in. You know, she didn't say, Where are you from? Like most of people, I hate that. I hate that question. <laughs> if I go into a non Asian area, always, Where are you from? <laughs> Immediately, you know, with the big eyes and big mouth and oh, <laughs> like I came from the moon or something. Always like that. American, Europe, always, Where are you from? <laughs> and like, so stick the head right next to you. Oh, but the Indian, they don't care. They may ask later. She immediately greeted me, Hari Hari Ram Ram, very powerful voice. She's naturally, you know, matter of fact that I'm here and I know her God, yeah, that I accept it already and that I have to know that's her God and I should know and I have known it already. And like her friend or her family, Hari Hari Ram Ram, and she says, she says, it's such a powerful. <laughs> and I say almost like masculine voice. Well, she's also robust, you know? I was thinking maybe she's a man, but she's not. She has a bunch of kids, and her husband also as strong and handsome. <laughs> I wonder who is a man, who is a woman, and who is more handsome. <laughs> because the, the way she said it, you know, so authoritatively. 
It's more powerful than what I'm saying normally. Say, Harry, Harry, Ram, Ram, see, like that, truly. But more powerful than that, more natural. Like she keeps saying that all her life already. Nothing else would matter like that. Wow, beautiful. Just a farmer, very rural area farmer. Hmm. I love that so much about India. Hmm. No matter how many religions has taken root in India, the Indian people inside they're always the same. You know, they just love God in whatever name you call him. They just religious, whatever religion you want to call yourself. Oh, they just love um, practitioners, love yogis, love monks, and love nature. They love animals, you know, and their environment, trees, and they, they worship them all and love them all. And I like that atmosphere. I love India. People look like they are poor, but they're not. They just don't care much about the inside. So instead of uh, elaborately build a little hut or something for themselves, sometimes they don't care, they just live on a tent on the street. Uh, when they're selling something on the street, they just live there also. Yeah, they don't go home anywhere. <laughs> Some places in India, maybe they cannot afford, maybe they couldn't care less, you know? But even the poor Indian people, their houses are very tidy. Yeah, very tidy compared to, you know, some place that I don't want to mention. <laughs> like uh, you don't find garbage or any refuse or stuff, leftover wood, planks or anything outside their house. They make use of everything. Otherwise they would tidy up, you know? Mm. You saw some, some of the village in, on our TV, right? Very tidy. And they take care of animals, even in their dire need for water. They would share, you know, their water and food to the needed one. I think most of you would like also to work alone, you know, by yourself, you know, not in group. Because maybe that's why you like to come work and see who, otherwise you will have stayed in New York or <laughs> Los Angeles, you know, middle of the city or something. So if you feel like too crowded or something in your office, you can please uh, pick an area, ask them to decorate it for you. You can go there and work if you feel better, okay? You can also work in your own sleeping area, but it's just, you know, too much of the working energy or atmosphere, so you can have a working area and sleeping area. If you want, try to arrange it, okay? I know, I know many of you would like that like uh, your own office area, because you can sleep anytime. <laughs> <laughs> Am I right? <laughs> if you sit in the office, you know, you have to look left or right. Um, oh, can I sleep or not? <laughs> maybe they don't move, because if we, they know if they move, maybe they They will fall. sleep already? They will sleep already. Oh, you know, how surprising. <laughs> Even I know that. <laughs> it's okay if you sleep on the job. Hmm? I know, but I won't say anything. <laughs> because I know all of you are very responsible anyway. Hmm? So even if you sleep in the office or if you sleep in your area, it's the same to me. <laughs> no? Huh? I must know everything, my God. <laughs> How can you hide anywhere, even even in a deep area? <laughs> she still look into it and know what you're doing. <laughs> this master is oh, <laughs> to be avoided. <laughs> anyway, we have many area, you know, still empty, and even some working ready area. If I want to go to your area ever, I will tell somebody first. The boss is coming. Look busy. <laughs> That's why I don't go there, because what's the use? <laughs> I can never catch anybody <laughs> by surprise, you know. You locked all your area, <laughs> everything. It's all dark and secret. <laughs> I don't know the number of your gate. 
uh, lock. Besides, you keep changing. Even they change my own gate, they don't tell me. <laughs> so every time I come back, they all know, oh, master is coming. <laughs> Just stand in front of the gate, no secret, you know. I have to ask this person, that person, the number of the lock. Mm. So anyway, <laughs> anyway, I'm not coming there, so don't worry about it. I feel useless. You all know, you tell each other, you know, we all have intercom, you know. So, hey, master, come into your area. Wake up, man. <laughs> Wake up, what do you think you're doing? <laughs> and the other, the person probably was still in Samari. What did you say, huh? <laughs> I'm working, why you disturb me? <laughs> <laughs> ah, the story, huh? Story of Monaco, huh? Yeah. In Monaco, I just happened to know one, maybe multimillionaire or maybe billionaires or... I don't want to mention his name, okay? Because he's very famous. Came from a very famous, wealthy family. And connected a little bit with even the royalty, okay? So, anyway. It wasn't like I went around or looking for, <laughs> for rich people or anything. I know they're all rich anyway. <laughs> and many times they just come and talk to me casually like that. One, one person, famous writer from England, went there. I even want to marry me, <laughs> my God. <laughs> that was some years ago, a few years ago, when I was still in, in S Monaco. Huh? No, that was, we already had SMC, so it's reason. Huh? Reason as maybe six years, huh? Okay. Well, I look a little less young now, but six years, you didn't know how old I looked like. <laughs> <laughs> One of the, my assistants at that time, huh? They used that hotel room more than I use. Yeah, because I had to go there, prepare a camera, and then take the documents and print it out for me, and then leave so that I can do my work alone, and then come back and fetch it. So is it not fair that people say, I live in a luxury hotel? They live in it. They should be on the newspaper. <laughs> there are more than I in there, you know? <laughs> so I told them, you, you too, should be criticized. You live in a luxury hotel. All the time you go there, <laughs> both of you, huh? do anything. <laughs> Hanging my clothes, <laughs> boiling water, something like that. <laughs> yeah. Taking out documents from computer, I had zero knowledge about machine. Yeah, lucky. So you know I'm a real woman, eh? Yeah. Only men, they love machine. <laughs> <laughs> so I know this um, rich uh, person. Huh? He's not young anymore, okay, of course. Yeah. And he also has a girlfriend next to him. Mm. Real big, blonde, tall. Canadian. <laughs> and I know both of them. Because one time I went to a Thai restaurant and eat something. I, I love spicy food, just like you. <laughs> Everywhere there's Thai restaurant, I surely go. <laughs> At least one time, you know? So I went there and then the multi million or billion, he has a yacht, of course, a yacht. You know what a yacht is? A big bowl with many rooms in it. He even can land a helicopter on it. And then I was eating eh, alone. Eh? I go always alone. I'm always alone. <laughs> I don't always invite the two handsome guys. And they live somewhere else, far away. And whenever I feel like eating, I don't want to wait for them. Say, so, okay, come over. The address is so and so. And if you get lost, then don't worry about it. <laughs> I eat for myself. I normally don't like to wait. Okay? If I want to go eat, I go just like that. Yeah, otherwise I don't have mood anymore. Or oh, I do something else later. I'll go somewhere else later. So I went alone all the time, most of the time. Yeah. But whenever I invite them, or one of them, oh, or the restaurant girls, oh, 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 ga, ga. <laughs> oh, how come? Who's he? So handsome. Ah, where he come from? I said, you make sure where my food come from, and now, not the guy, <laughs> where he come from. I'm hungry, I'm joking with her, you know, not like ordering, but I make it like a joke, she knows, because I know the restaurant, and they know me, I'm very kind to them. <laughs> 